Hello students, I welcome you all to this session of introducing the subject unit wise. So let's jump on to the video. So as you all know, we are, we are dealing with the subject called software engineering. The subject code is 19 UCS 10 and for the students of BCA, it is 21 UCA 09. So myself, G. Anwar Basha from the Department of Computer Science and Ms. S. Nandini from the Department of BCA are going to handle this subject for this semester. So in second unit, we are going to discuss about requirements analysis and specifications. So every project has to have some requirements, right? And it has to be analyzed. So any kind of requirements that has to be put into any project has to be analyzed first. And they have to be specified for some point of time. We are going to discuss about requirements gathering and analysis. So how the requirements are gathered and we are going to do a vast kind of analysis for the requirements that will complete our project. Next, we are going to discuss about a very important area called software requirement specifications. In short, it is called as SRS. So on the second half of the second unit, we are going to discuss about software design. So since we have done all the documentation process, then we are going to jump on to the design phase. So this design phase comprises of the characteristics which would say whether the software design is good or bad. We will talk about cohesion and coupling, the techniques and the arrangement of modules in layer fashion. And finally, we are going to discuss about the software design approaches. So getting into requirements gathering and analysis, so we are going to see about how the requirements are gathered. So it starts after the feasibility study. Since every project manager, so who is going to start a project, so has to deal with the customers. So if he is going to deal with them, so he has to do a feasible study. And after this feasibility study, he is going to develop an SRS based upon the study. So it is carried out by the system analyst. So, so when the feasibility study is done, so a system analyst designated so has to come inside the scene. So he has to collect data and conceptualize into exact product. So he is the person who is responsible for seeing a product completed even before it is getting started. So what are the main activities we are going to see here? So we are going to gather our requirements and we are going to uh, specify the requirements. So gathering consists of collecting requirements from stakeholders. So who are the stakeholders here? The end users or the company that is going to purchase the software that we are going to develop. And how is it collected? So it can be collected through interviews, it can be collected through existing documents, it can be collected through task analysis and also scenario analysis. So whereas interviews and the existing documents have a clear cut idea of what we are going to do. But whereas talking about task analysis, so the system analysis has to bring into the consideration of what kind of tasks a software will perform and how it will be giving the output for the end user. And when it comes to scenario, every task is broken up, broken up into uh, sub modules where all these modules will be talking about how they are going to combine and how it is going to do a particular task. Let's move on to the next thing. So we are going to talk about analysis, requirements analysis. So what are we going to analyze here? The data collected by the system analyst gets converted into a valuable format. So this is where the raw data is getting converted into useful data. So that the company can understand. So what are they going to do about the project? And what are the three things that are going to face when we are doing the analysis? The first one is anomalies. Second one is inconsistency. The third one is incompleteness. So anomalies are something that when you are not sure what kind of data to share with the uh, system analyst, the customer is not able to tell what a clear cut idea is, then certain anomalies arise, so which will lead to non-completing of the project. Then inconsistency is something that, so when a customer has one idea at the starting of the project and he is not able to bring that same idea until the end of the project, so there is an inconsistency here. The last thing is incompleteness, so sharing um, half the data or uh, incompleted data will again go to incompleteness of the whole project. 
let's discuss about the main big area or the documentation process it's called as software requirements specification in short it is srs so we are going to arrange all the documents so since we have done so much of gathering and so much of analysis of all the requirements so they have to be done in certain ways right so it could be it could have been collected through papers it could have been collected through interviews through videos online session phone uh, interviews everything so those have to be collected and those have to be documented and arranging these documents in a very specific way so that everyone can understand so whoever is getting involved in this project so everyone can understand this project on what way it is going to get completed so you are going to arrange in such a way that every kind of audience target audience are able to understand and it has to have certain uses right so what are the people that are going to use this srs so you have software developers you have documentation writers you have project managers again you have marketing personnel all these variety of people will be depending only on srs to get the knowledge about what the product is going to be looking then so to talk about the characteristics of a good srs document so we it is traceable right so it could be traceable at any point of time so it is in an easy way it could be traceable then it is concise so that it is short so that it can be understood by each and every layman who is going to enter into the project then it is implementation independent so it's easy for us to bring out onto the next project too and it is modifiable at any point of time if you have changes in your project at any point of time it is modifiable and it is also verifiable and we are going to talk about the second half of the second unit which is software designing so this software designing is something that which are going to be based upon the srs document so that is completed by the system analyst so the document the whole complete official document is going to get converted into a design document so the design document gets into two stages actually so we have a preliminary designing and we also have a detailed designing so as you all know preliminary will have certain starting stages of designing so that people will not be sure about how it is going to look like then we are going for a detailed designing here is where you are going to supposed to tell the exact values of how the software should look we are going to talk about here cohesion and coupling so what is the cohesion value the cohesion is something that which is going to bind or which is going to strengthen up the functional module of any project so as you all know a project is a very big product and it has to be broken down into small modules and these modules will tell you about the measure so cohesion is that kind of metric and if you are going to talk about coupling so every module will be again broken up in, broken up into again functional values so and these functional values will be interacting with each other so suppose a module called bus transport system so is going to work so the driver details as well as the bus manager so all these modules will be interacting with each other of them so in the same way we are going to talk about the coupling techniques so we have layered arrangements here so how you are going to arrange all this in a very hierarchical way these are mentioned over here the design which is going to have certain hierarchy here so there are types of layers here so you have subordinate you have superordinate you have depth and width you have fan in and fan out you have control abstraction so all these layers according to the project and the need of the project so they are going to get set at any level of hierarchy that we are going to set by. so you have a small diagram so how it is going to get arranged here finally talking about software design approaches so how are you going to do it so you have function oriented design and then you have object oriented design so in function oriented design so there are two techniques so which is called as top down decomposition wherein the modules get completed from the top order and you are going to go down gradually to the lower level and then you have the second type called as centralized wherein all modules which get connected to the main module are done or completed then you have object oriented object oriented is something that you would have been learning since uh, any programming languages so it was implemented in uh, c++ 
so it is now implemented in java and all the other languages so that are now ruling the it industry so you have data abstraction here we have data structure then we have data type so we have uh, representing uh, diagrams here so thank you all we will be meeting in our classes regular classes wherein an elaborate uh, explanation of all these things will be given to you thank you